Okay, everybody, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now, today we are going to be looking at our adventure diving with manatees in Florida. Now, we had gotten up early in the morning. It was about 40 or so degrees outside Fahrenheit. Chilly. And we're about to go get in the water with these beautiful, beautiful animals. So we were out of Crystal River, Florida, and we hopped on a boat and headed out to Three Sisters Springs. Now this is crystal clear water and manatees are, were just starting to kind of move into these springs that feed warm water out into the ocean. So in the cooler months, these manatees will actually come in from a marine ecosystem, a saltwater ecosystem, and move into these little springs where they can stay warm in the cooler months. And so we actually were able to see a plethora of manatees and even some calves. Now it is actually illegal to approach and touch manatees uh, throughout the majority of the United States. However, in Crystal River on guided tours and in approved areas, uh, you can actually interact and touch manatees uh, legally. And so we were able to get hands-on and in the water with these beautiful, beautiful animals. Let's take a look. Hi-ho, everybody. Um, we're up, we got up like at 520. Uh, we've got our wetsuits partially on and we are headed to go and dive with manatees. Um, we're right out of uh, Crystal River. So we're ready to get to it. We're ready to go show you guys some sea cows, some manatees, some mermaids. Um, hopefully we see a bunch of manatees and they're friendly and they love us and we can get some good footage. So wish us luck and uh, let's, go, let's go find some manatees maybe. Once we were on the boat, we headed out uh, to get to the spring. So we started off in a bay and then we snake up through the crystal clear spring water. And we already started seeing some manatees coming up to the surface to breathe and, and just kind of swimming along. So we were just ready to get into the water. Now, lucky for us, uh, it appeared that we actually were there at the perfect time. Uh, not only were we the only tour out on that day, but there were the perfect amount of manatees in the springs to give perfect clarity of the water and not be super overcrowded uh, with a ton of manatees. Now manatees are also known as sea cows. And this is actually a really appropriate name because just like cows, manatees spend most of their time grazing on vegetation. So these animals are actually perfectly adapted uh, to grazing in an aquatic setting. They have a really flexible kind of upper lip that they can use to kind of rip up uh, sea grasses and weeds and things like that. And they have these big slab cheek teeth that they use to grind up and smash this vegetation so that they can swallow it. What's even crazier is that these animals actually have like over, I think, 40 meters worth of intestines snaking through their body. In fact, most of the manatees bulk in their body size is taken up with their digestive tract. And most of that is because they have a pretty simple stomach system and they're relying on gut bacteria to help kind of ferment the vegetation that they're feeding on in order to convert it into energy. So they have to spend a lot of their time actively feeding and grazing. 
Now the word manatee comes from uh, a, a Latin word that's often disagreed with. Uh, some people uh, think that the word manatee comes from the Latin manus, meaning hand, referring to their flippers, which are actually um, lined with toenails that they'll actually use to kind of crawl uh, on the you know, water's floor, on the seabed or, 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 or riverbed. And they'll actually kind of push themselves along and then use their big kind of flattened round tail to help locomote themselves as well. Other people think it's from the root word manatee, meaning breasts. And that's actually because manatees, their, their nipples um, are kind of located underneath the arms on either side. So uh, when, when first early settlers and, and, and sailors saw these animals you know, feeding their young, it appeared that they were breastfeeding because for all intents and purposes, they were. And so we, we can kind of see the relation between those two words. I think either word would work really well, but I have to lean more towards uh, breast because that is really em that really embodies um, the whole of Cyrenia, uh, which are the, the, the dugongs and the manatees, but specifically the manatees. Another really, really cool fact about manatees is that there's actually some speculation that these animals were what kick-started the legends about mermaids. Sailors who had been out to sea for, for years or at least months and months and months, oftentimes without seeing any uh, female of their same species, um, could have seen these, these almost eerie, strange, human-like, in some cases, organisms swimming through the, the tropical, shallow waters of the Caribbean, of, of, of the Gulf of Mexico. And so they were like, Oh my gosh, those are mermaids. They have to be. They're breastfeeding their babies. They've got arms, but they've got like a fish-like tail. And it is definitely possible that some delirious or inebriated, uh, you know, sailors could have misinterpreted these very real animals as the mythical creatures known as mermaids. Um, now, there are a few species of manatees. Uh, they range from up here in the coastal waters of North America. There's the Amazonian manatee and I believe the West African manatee. Um, and they are all genetically distinct and they fill different niches. However, what they all share, uh, they're all common traits. Uh, they're all primarily herbivorous and they are slow moving. Actually, a behavior that manatees exhibit um, is their main mode of locomotion really is called logging. And so this behavior is exactly how it sounds. The manatees will actually just sit and float along the surface of the water. So while we are engaging with the manatees, we actually participate in this behavior. Uh, they gave us little pool noodles to kind of wear and float in uh, so that we would actually be, for all intents and purposes, participating in that behavior alongside those manatees. So it was a really cool experience to kind of not only be immersed and close up to these beautiful animals, but to be participating in the very activities that they engage in on a daily basis. Sadly, uh, I believe all species of manatees are endangered. Uh, and part of this is because of, of habitat loss, um, uh, red tides which cause you know drastic levels of of carbon dioxide and toxic uh, parameters of of seawater uh through algal blooms um and 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 things like like collisions boat collisions these animals are mammals and so they have to surface every few minutes to breathe and being at the surface, uh, they're subject to being hit by things like boat propellers and things of that nature. Uh, so oftentimes it's not uncommon to see these animals with big, deep scars along their back, along their flippers. Um, so what we can do is to help push more uh, regulations on places like, like no wake zones where, where boats have to reduce their speed and watch for manatees. And a lot of this stuff has already been implemented in Florida and we have been able to see some, some measured uh, improvement in collisions with manatees. Uh, but it obviously is still an issue um, and we hope that we can get as much of it resolved as we can so that these peaceful giants uh, can continue to thrive in their natural environments. Now baby manatees uh, are often born around 
know, maybe 30 uh, kilos or, or about 60 pounds. <laughs> um, and so that's a pretty big baby. Uh, and they grow incredibly fast. Um, drinking their mother's nutrient-rich and fat-rich milk, uh, they actually can, can, can grow at a considerable rate, just like a lot of marine animals like whales and, and dolphins. Um, most marine fully aquatic mammals uh, do grow at a pretty unprecedented rate uh, because a lot of a manatee's protection is in its size. Manatees don't really have a lot of natural predators. Occasionally a shark may go at a manatee. A lot of manatees share an, an environment with, with things like crocodiles and things of that nature. Uh, so it's not to say that they are not present in these types of environments where they can uh, become injured or attacked or even eaten. Um, but the bigger you are, typically the much more intimidating you would seem to, to an animal like a shark or a crocodile. And so size is good. If you're a manatee, you want to be bigger uh, so that you can kind of evade predators in that way. Now manatees are actually decently playful. A lot of these manatees in some of these, you know, set up diving locations um, have a pretty positive experience with the people who are involved. So it's not at all uncommon for some of the babies or even the adults to kind of swim over, lumber over to you um, and, and kind of seemingly ask for you to, to give them a good rub on the belly or maybe scratch them on the head uh, because these animals, you know, being peaceful, being herbivorous, uh, they do enjoy a bit of interaction. Uh, it's not at all uncommon to see manatees traveling in small groups. Uh, oftentimes you'll see a mother and offspring, but sometimes additional males might tag along, additional older juveniles might hang out, and some of these springs can actually have congregations of hundreds of manatees in some of the really cold months when they're seeking refuge. And so these animals actually really enjoy seemingly uh, interacting with people. Uh, in fact, uh, take a look at this little rambunctious baby who kind of twirls around in the water and comes and swims over to me. He was absolutely so freaking cute. Uh, I was able to give him a little pat on the head. Uh, it was just an absolutely magical experience. I loved diving with sharks, but I think I enjoyed diving with manatees even more. Now, manatees are actually a personal favorite animal of mine. I know I seemingly say this every single episode, but I actually went through a manatee phase. I have multiple stuffed animal manatees. Um, my, uh, uh, there's a, an aquarium in my area that has um, uh, West Indian American manatees, tri Trichecus uh, manatus. And I just remember just loving to go and see these magnificently large but peaceful animals. And uh, they've just always had a special place in my heart. And this was the first time ever I was able to get um, really close up to wild manatees in their natural environment. And that was just priceless. Now, a lot of times you'll actually see these manatees covered with thick marine algae or barnacles and things like that. Uh, this really doesn't affect the manatee all that much. Uh, really, the outside of a manatee is comparable to the hull of a ship. Uh, they, they don't really need to be, uh, you know, hydrodynamic in any sort of way. They're not swimming very fast. They just kind of float along. Um, Sometimes they will kind of try and scratch stuff off on posts or, or the seabed and things like that. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it really doesn't affect their lives as much. <laughs> uh, so sometimes they rock a pretty cool, you know, hairdo with all that algae growing all over them. Or uh, they've got a few little hitchhiking barnacles. Um, sometimes the, the sabbatical back in the freshwater streams can help kind of kill off some of that marine stuff. Um, but of course, when they return to their natural uh, saline environment, they're always subject to, to get more algae and, and, and barnacles, um, but it doesn't seem to affect them all that much. Well, diving with manatees has to be one of the coolest experiences that I have ever been able to take part in. And it is something I would suggest for anybody to do. Um, it's it's not physically strenuous. It's it's something a, a kid could do. It's something a, a you know an elderly person could do. It is just such a unique and magical experience in our own uh, United States of America. One of the really really cool animal related experiences um, that's 
kind of mutualistic in the sense that it's enjoyable for, for both parties. The manatees seem to enjoy um, hanging out with, with people and people obviously uh, really enjoy hanging out with these manatees. Um, just a reminder again, uh, don't try and pursue these types of animals on your own. Uh, I would really suggest going with some kind of tour agency because a lot of these areas get closed off at certain times of the year to protect these animals because they are uh, protected species and, and, and are threatened or endangered in a lot of their range. And so you can actually get into some pretty serious fines and trouble if you go out and try and do this yourself. Um, but some of these tours can be as cheap as you know $100 a person and um, it's an absolutely priceless experience. Experience. Um, I would really recommend it for anyone. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications to get all the new episodes. If you want to uh, get a shirt, we've got the links in the description below. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to comment just how much you love manatees and be sure to stay tuned for the next video of Jackson Wildlife. Thank you guys for watching. Keep it up.